Hey, it's AJ Lester here from UnleashAwesome.com. So today what I want to do is share a little framework with you that I came up with that I found quite useful in helping me to get things done. So I wanted to share it with you in case you find it useful too. So it's a simple little framework and I call it the preparation execution cycle. That might sound pretty big or technical or scary, but it's actually a very simple framework and it's pretty easy for me to explain right here. So the idea is that the best way to get things done and achieve the things that you want to achieve in life is to have preparation followed by execution and you have that go in a cycle and the amount of preparation you do is a small amount of preparation and you follow that up with execution and then the cycle follows around and the execution feeds back into the preparation which then feeds forward into the execution and you go around in a cycle. And if you do this, what you're actually doing is actually keeping the preparation side of things in balance with the execution side of things and you're making sure that you don't have too much of one or the other. Now I just want to relate this back to a video that I spoke about last week or video that I made last week where I spoke about intellectual actions and real world actions and I spoke about how often people get very attracted to intellectual actions because they're much more comfortable than real world actions where you're actually putting yourself out there. But I also spoke about how intellect, intellectual action on its own almost never gets you very far because it's usually just a means to an end, not actually an end in itself. And if you want the end in itself and achieve the outcome that you want, then you usually have to take some sort of real world action. Now, I also mentioned that intellectual actions can make the real world actions more effective. So there's nothing wrong with intellectual actions in and of themselves. It's just a problem when you spend all your time only on intellectual actions and not on the real world actions. And really the idea is you want to keep the two in balance. And so this framework is a way that you can do that. And I kind of alluded to this a little bit last week, but I didn't explain it specifically. But really this framework of preparation followed by execution in a cycle is a practical way that you can do that. And there's lots of different ways that it can manifest. So when I'm talking about preparation, obviously I'm talking about getting ready to do something. And preparation really fits in this category of intellectual action. So it's things like learning, planning, brainstorming, setting goals, all that kind of thing. On the other hand, the execution is what fits in the category of real world action. So that's when you get out there and you actually make things happen. Maybe there's some sort of physical actions that you take. Maybe you get out of the house and go and do some things or put yourself out there in some way. And that's the thing that really ends up getting you the result. The preparation gets you ready for the action and the action is what leads to the result. So preparation, execution, and then you'll either get the result there or very often what you need to do is go from the execution back to more preparation and continue from there. So let me give you an example of how this might play out. So quite a few years ago, I started learning how to do different styles of dancing. And there's one particular style that I really got attracted to and I got really into it and I had a dance partner and we had a really great club that we used to dance at and there were some really great teachers there and they were very generous with their time and they would often give us lots of coaching and tips and things like that. But the real trick was we really only needed at one time maybe 15 minutes of coaching. You know, we just need a teacher to watch us a little bit and give us a few tips. And then we could go off and use that for an hour or two or three of practice before we actually needed to learn more, you know, get more tips or more insights from the teacher. And that was different from, you know, a typical model where, you know, you might get a private lesson for an hour and the teacher would give you all these different things to work on and that kind of thing. And you'd end up with way more than you could actually put into practice. And so a lot of that learning would not be something you could apply straight away. It might be something you would apply over time, or maybe some of that stuff that they taught you, you would never actually use because it was just too much and you'd move on to other things. So what we would do is just get a few minutes of coaching, spend a little bit of time applying it, practicing, doing it over and over. And then when we found we'd exhausted whatever it was that the teacher had taught us and we'd sort of achieved it and, and we were ready to move on to the next level, that's when we would go and approach them and get something new to work on. So there was this constant learning, practicing, learning, practicing, you know, intellectual action, real world action, always interspersed. So it kept the two in balance. Uh, another example might be something like preparation and planning. 
you know, if you just go out and take action, you haven't got a plan, then very often that real world action won't be as effective as if you spend a bit of time planning beforehand. But of course, if all you do is spend a lot of time planning and you don't take the action, then you're not going to achieve results very effectively either. So you need to keep the planning and preparation in balance with the actual application and the real world execution. So what I suggest to people is don't spend forever making a really big, long plan for something that you want to achieve. It's very important that you have an idea of the end result, you have an idea of the big picture, and you have an idea of the overall steps on a high level without too much detail that you're going to need to follow to achieve that vision or the goal or whatever it is in the big picture. But then when it comes to planning what specific things you're going to do, I very often recommend people don't plan too many actions too far ahead. They plan a little bit, they plan the first few steps that they know will put them on that path to achieving the goal or achieving the vision or whatever. And then they go out and put the plan into action. They start executing. And by doing that, you actually realize, maybe you'll learn some things as you're executing and you realize, oh, some of the things that I plan, I can't even use them because it doesn't really work that way in the real world. And of course, if that is a learning that you have while you're executing, then you might realize, man, if I spent a long time planning this, most of my plan might be useless because it doesn't work in the real world. What I really need to do is plan around this different thing that I've discovered by executing is what I need to do. So the execution obviously then informs what, your, what future planning you might need to do or what future preparation you might need to do. So you just let things cycle around, you know, the plan guides the execution and the execution guides further planning. And that's almost always the case, you know, when I'm working with clients and we get together a plan, we put together a plan based on what we think will work best. You know, we have our very best shot at it, not going too far ahead, like I said, just the first few steps. And then I say to them, now go and put the plan into practice and make a note of all the problems that came up. Make a note of anything that didn't work the way that we thought it was going to work. And then when we talk next time, come back to me and we'll iron out all of those problems and we'll smooth the way so that future planning will be even more effective. Obviously, we want to anticipate what we think might be the problems and make the plan fit around that so that we're going in having our very best shot at making it work the best we can. But there's always things that happen once you come to executing that you can't necessarily anticipate. And that's why you need to do the execution before you do too much planning. So we're really just keeping things in balance here. And when I'm talking about this, you know, I had this insight where I discovered that you shouldn't do too much of the intellectual stuff before the real world stuff. And then you should use the real world stuff to let you know what future intellectual stuff you need to do. I had that realization. And then a little while after that, I realized that this is something that I'd learn about in a different way in the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And this is just an awesome book, which I highly recommend. I can't say enough good things about it. It's basically the old, my all time favorite personal development book. Uh, it's one of the first that I ever read and it still stays up there as one of the very best. So I highly recommend the whole book. Uh, but there's one particular thing he talks about in there where he talks about the P slash PC balance. And the P stands for production and PC stands for production capability. So production is really getting the end result. It's doing things that get you a result. And production capability is having the ability to produce and get the end result. And really, when you look at it, this down, resolves down to production is the real world action and production capability is very often the intellectual action, at least in terms of preparation and execution. And so what he talks about in the book is one of the fundamental principles of effectiveness is actually keeping P, production, and PC, production capability, in balance. If you spend too long on one or too long on the other, then you're going to be out of balance and you're going to be less effective than you could be. So really what I'm talking about when I'm talking about preparation and execution going in a cycle, it's really a way of making that balance happen in real life. Spend a bit of time uh, planning, sorry, or preparing, and then you execute to the point where you say, I, if I keep executing, I'm not going to be as effective anymore because I need to go back and learn some more. I need to go back and do some more planning. I need to set some future goals because I've already achieved the ones that I've set for myself, whatever it might be. And then you just keep on going in a cycle, as I said. 
So this is a little framework that I hope you can use. If you've got something you want to achieve, make sure you keep the planning or the preparation and the execution in balance. Go in a cycle and see how that works for you. And I think you'll find, like it has for me and lots of other people that I've worked with, it really makes you a lot more effective at achieving the things that you want to achieve. So that's what I got for you for today. So take it home with you, try it out, let me know what you think, put some comments below uh, with your thoughts on it or any other feedback that you've got for me or any questions or anything else you want to chat about. Subscribe to the channel and then come back, come back again tomorrow and uh, we'll talk about some more stuff. Catch you then.